Okay, these are the instructions for Classwork 128, the first graded assignment of the second semester. I'd like you first to know that you need to get to the new class documents, the Math 1, Math 1 Honors Quarter 3 documents. And again, to get there, I'd like you to go to Ventura High School, type it in Google, go to the home page, staff, staff directory find my name on here Matthew Marshall so all the way down Matthew Marshall click on my name click on the link that shows up and then you'll get my landing page and those are the new links you will only have to do this once once you click on it it should always be in your quick links now so that will take you to the new documents where you'll get the homework and all the good stuff that you need to make up your grade. I'd like you to today, since it is the new quarter, I'd like you to share a new Google slide with me by your last name, first name, period, and the new quarter three. If you could title it that. If you'd like to use the same title page, as you've used before, feel free. But again, leave this brand new one for what we're doing the second quarter. Share that with me, please. All right, this video is going to continue to show the work that I'm going to have you do in your packet or on a separate piece of paper. And then I'd like you to pick one of these problems. And on your Google Slides, I'd like you to make up one of your own similar to it. So here we go. This will get you through the first set of problems in the packet. First one is on page 2, 1 through 4. What I'd like you to do for those is plug those points in for x and y. See which one satisfies both equations. And then graph it and see with your eyeballs that that point is the solution point. So again, you can see module 5 is review of systems. We're picking up where the district wants me to start. So we're doing systems a little bit more in quarter three. So here we go. X and Y. Where there's a Y for this first point, plug in negative two. Where there's an X, plug in zero. So negative two equal to three times zero minus two. That is true. But when I plug in that same point into the second equation, Y equal X, gives me a false statement, zero equal negative two that point did not satisfy both equations. When I plug it into the second equation, two for y, two for x, using the point for point b, that gives me a false statement right away. When I plug that into the second equation, it works, but it has to work for both. When I plug in point c, one, one into both, one for y, one for x gives me one, equal three times one minus two, one equals three minus two, one equals one, that is true. And then when I plug that into the second one, it makes that one work as well. That point is a solution to both linear equations written in standard form with y. So when I plot them, negative two for my y-intercept, three over one for my rate of change or my slope, negative two, over 1, up 3, over 1, up 3, be able to graph. Draw that line through. My second equation, y equals x, is y equals 1x plus 0 in disguise. 0 being my y-intercept, going over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1. Graph both those, and I could clearly see where they intersect is at that coordinate 1 1 right there on the xy axis that is the solution point that's what it looks like when you solve a system by graphing there's the work algebraically there's how it looks graphically that's the point 1 1 all right i'm going to have you do number 2 the same way 3 and 4 on this page again just practicing graphing and checking the solution point yourself. So this one, starting at 3 on the y-axis, 
going over one, up one, my rate of change, my slope, my common difference. Draw your line through them. My second line has a y-intercept of three, so I can see right away that's their intersecting point and has a slope of negative two over one, over one, down two, over one, down two, over one, down two. Draw a line through them. I could clearly see that that point is zero, three, where they intersect. To check that point, I'm gonna plug in zero for x and three for y. That's the point zero comma three. Zero for x, three for y. So I'm gonna plug in three right here, zero right here, three right here, zero right here. Three for y, zero for x. That one works, three equals three. Next equation, three for y, plug in negative two, times zero for x gives me three equals zero plus three, which is three equals three. Proves that point algebraically satisfies that system of equations. All right, for this, again, just practicing, I'm gonna have you graph this line, see if three fives on it, and then find two other points on the line. So two x minus one, practice a negative one, Rate of change, slope, over one, up two, over one, up two, over one, up two, over one, up two. Draw your line through them best you can. Slope of two over one, y-intercept of negative one. I could clearly see the point three, five. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. That point is a solution to that equation. That point is on that line. If that point's on the line, it's a solution to this equation. Plug in five here, plug in three here, we'll make that work. Five equals six minus one, that's true. Any point on this line is a solution to that equation. Three, five is a solution because it's on that line. Other points that are on that line that are solutions to that equation, pick any of them. I'll pick this first one right here which looks like that's the point two for x, three for y. And again, if I plug in three right here and two right here, will give me a true statement. Three equals four minus one, that's true. Another point right here, one, one. Another solution point, plug in one here, one here will give me one equals two minus one, that's another true statement. Any point on that line is a solution to that equation right there. All right, back to this one. This is arithmetic, so that means from this y number, and again, they have the y on the bottom, x on the top, I'm adding some unknown d number to get to here, adding that same unknown number here, and then one more to get to that negative seven. So you can see from 17 through these two blanks, to negative seven, I'm adding three of those unknown common difference numbers or slope numbers. So my equation, starting with 17 and ending with negative seven is 17 plus three of these d's written together as 3d equals that negative seven. That's how you set it up. And then to solve that, Start by taking away 17 on both sides. Minus 17 minus 17 gives me 3D equals negative 24. Divide by 3. And you'll get that common difference number is negative 8. Which makes sense. If I erase these Ds right here, and put that negative eight, you'll see how this works, where the first term, one is x, y is 17. If I take away eight, it gives me the next y term, which would be nine. And if I take that nine, minus eight goes down to one, and then one minus eight is negative seven. So you can see that works. 
that would be my slope negative 8 over 1. My y intercept, if I backtrack to the zero term right here, I would be adding 8. So my zero term would be 0, and then 17 plus 8, I think, is whatever that number is, 25. So 0, 25. This equation would be y equals negative 8x plus 25. Can you write that equation for me on 12 to prove to me that you are listening? So the equation of this sequence where the zero term right here, adding 8 to the left, 0, 25, my equation would be y equals negative 8x plus 25. And I'd like to see you plug in one of these points into that equation to see if it works. Plug in one of these points, 0, 25, the y-intercept, or this point, 1, 17, or 2, 9. Plug it into y equals negative 8x plus 25 and see if that works because that should work in that equation. Show me that to prove you're listening. All right, keep going. For these... Again, just inequalities, I'd like you to know how to graph them. This is page 8. Those other problems are on page 4. So for graphing these, I want you to start with 4 on the y-axis. The slope 3 over 1, over 1, up 3, over 1, up 3. The inequality tells me it is solid because of that equal line under there. It tells me y is less than this 3x plus 4. So less means all the points below that line. Easy to see when the line's almost flat, which is below. This is a little more hard because it's almost straight up and down. But these are below, even though you're going to the positive numbers. They want you to pick a point in the solution zone and a point not in the solution zone. So if I pick 0, 0 in this clearly solution zone, and then this point, negative 2, 4, clearly out of the zone, they want you to prove algebraically how that works. So if I plug in 0, 0 into the inequality, it should give me a true statement. 0 for y, 0 for x. That gives me 0 less than or equal to 3 times 0 plus 4 gives me 0 less than or equal to 4. That is true. When I plug in negative 2, 4 into that, gives me 4 less than or equal to 3 times negative 2 plus 4. That gives me 4 less than or equal to negative 6 plus 4. That is a false statement. 4 is not less than or equal to negative 2. That is false. Only 0, 0. Only these points will satisfy that inequality. All right, last one. Starting with 7x minus 2. So go down to negative 2 on the y-axis. Again, these are two problems from page 8. Negative 2 on the y-axis over 1 up 7 over 1 up 7 is my slope. This line is going to be dotted or dashed because there's no equal line under there. It's also going to be less than, so I'm going to shade below. And again, one of these vertical ones, it's harder to see which is below. So when I graph my line, my dotted line means I cannot pick any point on that line. Those will not satisfy the inequality. When I have one of these solid lines, any of these points along that line would have satisfied that inequality. For these dotted ones, none of these points along the line will satisfy the inequality. Only these points in this shaded zone. So I'm going to pick a good one, 2, 2. And then a bad one, I'm going to do negative 2, 2 as my bad point in the no-go zone or the non-solution zone. And then I want you to see that when I plug those in, 
2 for x, 2 for y. The first one should work. 2 less than 7 times 2 minus 2. 2 less than 14 minus 2, that is true. Plug in negative 2 for x, 2 for y. This one gives me 2, I'm sorry, negative 2. And then looks like I made a little mistake right here. Looks like I'm going to plug in 2 here and negative 2 right here. Looks like my first mistake of the new semester, of course. So positive 2 right here. Negative 2 right here gives me positive 2 less than negative 14. Again, this way, this is true the way I wrote it when I plugged it in wrong. So I want you to fix this. I want you to plug in positive 2 for y. Negative 2 for x will give you positive 2 less than negative 14 minus 2. That's the false statement. Positive 2 is not less than negative 16. So make that fix on there too to prove to me that you are listening. All right. Hopefully this helps get you started for this new semester. Good luck.